Hey guys, welcome to the process 2022. How are you guys doing this year? Welcome, Alessandra, the best hey. boss in the business. Thank you, thank you. I'm excited to be back for our first show, 2022. 2022, we in the house. All right, guys. So, you know what's going on? Tune in. I'll let you guys come on. Tune in, and you know what you guys been waiting for. This is the intro, the first <laughs> one. 2022 let's go welcome back guys welcome back welcome back so Alessandra, how were the holidays to you? Oh, they were great. I got the opportunity to spend time with my family in my hometown. So it's been a nice homecoming for me. How were your holidays? <sighs> a mess. No, they were good. They were the holidays were great. Great time. I got one day off and then two days off. So that was amazing. Oh my goodness. A couple Second days off. Life. And it, plus, it's cold up here in the north, East, so you know it kind of took the umph out the, you know, the holiday <laughs> season. It so yeah, it took the wind out my sails. But you know, hey. um, it was a good time, good time of year. And um, thank you, you know, for all those guys tuning in. Appreciate it. And um, yes. let's get into it. Tonight is hot topics. We're going into hot topics tonight. So um, as our first show of the year. Um, hot topics. We'll be going over the polls we had throughout last year and uh, yeah. earlier this year. We had some interesting polls where persons weighed in and gave their opinion on what the actual answer is. So we had a poll on, let's start with the first one. I won't go in order in terms of what's posted, but um, is rounding off um okay in cell processing mm. in terms of rounding off your documentation your cycles your dry times etc and um let me go into the what what's yeah, your opinion can you on even that? still do that with the tracking system and all this good stuff do you even get the opportunity to round up on your times um let me not answer that let me, let me, <laughs> let me not comment it's on that young edit button huh let me not comment on that just yet so rounding off meaning if you look at your printout right guys if you look at your printout it's gonna say the show the start time on that first s for sterilization right Right. And at the end, depending on the type of sterilizer you have, it might go all the way to E, some stuff at the S, but it might go all the way to E to end that cycle, right? And not every time it ends up at exactly four minutes. I don't know, yeah. yeah so sometimes do you, it's a little bit some, like... sometimes it's four minutes, two seconds, yeah. four minutes, five seconds, four minutes, 20 seconds. Do you, do you actually input four minutes, 20 seconds, or do you actually... Ooh, input four minutes four minutes has always <laughs> been my habit but <laughs> now that you're asking i'm like but well, wait though you really should record the time that's on the printout um and that also makes me think about the fact that you should also be checking to make sure that the time when your printout is accurate as well because they're all individual computer systems and sometimes they can get off count um true so you know your printout may be five minutes faster than the time on your computer so on and so forth and now stuff is not Sinking up. True that. True that. True that. So I've seen printouts because I, I check my printouts frequently in every facility I've worked. So you would get, you would have your start time. Let's say um, you run a cycle at 7 a.m. and that's your your second cycle, your first load. So it starts at 7:01, 22 seconds, right? Your sterilization phase goes 7:01, starts at 7:01, two seconds. And then the, after that four minutes, the t four minutes, seven oh four, no, four, no, seven oh five, 
it ends up 705 and 20 something seconds right. it's still four minutes it didn't go to five minutes it's still four minutes but you know the pressure takes time to evacuate it takes time you know depending right. on the, the type of sterilizer the like load you have like, yeah, like, yeah it doesn't just stop at like four minutes let's go <laughs> it might take a couple <laughs> extra seconds to you know to to get into the evacuation into the evacuation phase yeah. so that that was the that was the gist that was the purpose of the question to find out our person's looking at the can the, at the printout to find out if it's going over that recommended that well, not recommended time but that that um that set time so if you have a four minute on the slides it'll say 4 30 but it might go four minutes three seconds 30 minutes and 25 seconds. So, so, so what did the people in the poll say? Are they rounding up? So we have a poll. I'm curious now. We have 33 <laughs> persons on this poll. 33 right. persons saying no. They said don't do it, huh? Don't round off. Do the exact time on the printout. Do the exact time. No, I no, mean, it wasn't. It wasn't don't round. It's all like the question was, should we be rounding off our documentation times in cell processing. And they said, no, we shouldn't be rounding off. So that means you're saying four minutes, two seconds, one time, four minutes, five seconds, one time, your dry time might be 30 writing minutes. Down the exact, exact, the exact, exact time. Which makes sense. I mean, it's a, it's a legal document. The point of the document is to, to show that all the parameters were met. Mm -hmm. So that makes sense to me that you would record the exact time instead of rounding up and saying, okay, it was, it was four instead of four minutes and twenty five seconds. It was four thirty. Right, right. Like, but we don't we don't round off, and then some tracking systems don't give you the option to go over. Yeah, that, that's what my mom was. At. I'm like, with a tracking system, do you even get that option? Yes. I mean, it it presets what the cycle is, mm -hmm. and you're confirming yes, we hit yes. these parameters, right? Right. Um, now, provided that you are scanning your your uh, printout in, you do have documentation of the exact parameters of that cycle, though. So it's mm -hmm. not as if it doesn't that record doesn't exist. Right, but. right. The mm. record does exist, but but there's some tracking systems. So what some some tracking systems okay, some policies, I won't say the tracking system, some policies state that after you record, there's no scan. Some tracking systems have a scanning method where you scan in your printout, and some tracking systems do not. So after that print, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm, I know a couple, yeah. So after you input, now is that just because they're so low tech, or I think low tech okay. and maybe a, uh, uh, from a productivity standpoint, where they I want you to move, <laughs> right? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. You don't have to scan anything; just press the buttons and no throw it in the trash. No I, I don't believe that, Denai. I don't believe that anyone is shortchanging processes so that we can move faster. In so no, 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 this they, they, we haven't gotten there yet. No, we haven't. No, no, we always no. follow by the book, guys. All I'll buy the book. So, <laughs> but, so some tracking systems have that preset. You could put minutes and hours, right. but there's no spot for seconds. Seconds, right? We don't record the seconds. Do the seconds matter? To me, absolutely not. <laughs> but. <laughs> Oh wow! But I mean, <laughs> but I mean, oh. it's the same to me. It's almost the same argument, right? Like, but where are we going to stop? <laughs> right. So, but the seconds could be telling you something, though. So, if you normally go four minutes two seconds, and all of a sudden you jump up to four minutes twenty seconds, that could like, be tell, like, saying like, something's wrong with your sterilizer. If you hopefully keep you're paying that much attention. Oh, hopefully, hopefully, hopefully you're paying that. And then we, like you were saying, like sterilization cycles can move so fast. Like mm -hmm. I want to meet the tech that notices the seconds of difference. Oh, but there, we need there to are nominate couple. them for a couple of yeah. HSPA awards. We do <laughs> HS Hispa awards. Ah, ha, ha. Ah, ha, ha. That's another we, another good hot topic. No good topic. So the let me just went live today, right? Yeah, let me get into the numbers. Mm. So we had thirty-seven votes in all in the process group. If you haven't joined on Facebook. Take a look at it. And also we have on LinkedIn, Alessandra. Yes, on LinkedIn, man, we the following has gone crazy. It's nearly uh, matching the Facebook following right now. We're, oh, we just hit over 400 followers 
on LinkedIn and I believe on Facebook, we're getting close to 600. Um, oh, wow. So, yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's growing quite nicely and we mm-hmm. appreciate all the support. Yeah. So on the poll, we had 33 professionals saying, no, do not round off anything. Rounding off is bad. One guy even commented in court, they'll kill you in court. If you're around, I mean, right? that's that's my mind process was that like this is a legal document. <laughs> mm-hmm. So from that perspective, I can understand not rounding off on the times, especially if it's not, um, you know, like an industry standard where everybody mm-hmm. would understand that that's what happened, mm-hmm. you know. But you know, as an industry, we have those little hidden things like you don't put four minutes, two seconds, 35 30 minutes dry, five seconds for for 30.5 seconds. You don't put that on on there, especially those facilities without the tracking system. You don't document how many seconds you say 273.5 or four minutes, whatever. Right, you keep it rolling, (laughs) you know. That's that uh, that old school, right? And you get dinged for your 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 name more than the accurate uh sterilization times or dry times or temperatures. Out here nitpicking us. Yeah, yeah. Write your name, your full name, first first initial last name. Let's go. Say it with <laughs> so <laughs> and um four persons, uh, me included, said uh it's definitely okay to um to round off because we do that all the time without even paying attention to it. We round off just about everything. True. Uh the I last be curious in just in doing a little more research to see um, you know, like from a regulatory standpoint, if mm-hmm. there's a position because I mean, sometimes, I mean, we talk a lot about the fact that when surveyors and whatnot come into our areas, they don't necessarily, they're not always uh, subject matter experts. So this may be, you know, one of those, one of those things where only really SPD techs are going to sit there and argue with you about it because right, right, that RN right. that comes in and looks at your records probably ain't going to go that deep. However, right. Right. it is changing, right? Like more and more people are getting to understand what we do. Um, more and more people are getting certified in what we do. So... Mm. It may come to a head one day. Yeah, and even your biologicals. Do we say it, t- it took 24 minutes or 24 minutes, 5 seconds, 24 minutes, 10 seconds, 23 minutes, I mean, honestly, 50 seconds? sometimes it moves a little faster. Like, come exactly, on. Like, sometimes exactly. Sometimes your results are ready before the readout time. And so, right, do I say it was 23 minutes instead of 24 mm-hmm. if the readout on the paperwork says it's supposed to be a 24-minute readout? Yeah, what do you do? I mean, certain things we need to definitely take an, an extra look at. I say, I mean, I would say play it safe and record <laughs> the time that it, you know, the, the actual time that it is. That way you're not sitting there guessing, you know, whether or not you did the right thing because you actually wrote down the, the time of the cycle. And definitely follow your, your facilities, policies, and procedures. We don't want you doing something that is off what your department normally does. So speak right. to your manager, supervisor, and get that straight before making any, because your, your supervisor is going to come and say, who's putting 4.2 <laughs> seconds on here? You know, hey. you're messing up our, <laughs> our documentation. Up Don't start the year off on a bad note. Um, <laughs> so question number two, poll number two. Let's go. Um, if you find that in if you're in Dick and Tam, right? You're chilling, you know, you're doing your washing thing, you're in the some people call it the fishbowl, some people call it the sauna. Breaking some people it down. Yeah, you break you're breaking it down, you're back there, right? <laughs> so so you're back there, you're cleaning loners, right? And you notice this loaner has a bunch of gunk in it, you're cleaning it, you're flushing, you're brushing under the surface of the water, you're doing all your stuff, and then you look closely, you see an indicator, right? Okay. Now, you guys use 3M, the long ones, the three-inch ones, right? Now remember. you see a little two-inch bugger at the bottom there. You're like, that's not ours. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you do when you see that little guy there? Like, they use the tree. They use the tree. They clearly use the tree. Now you see that little bugger at the bottom there, it's been washed and stripped and... Oh, you know. now, okay, now, wait a minute, because, see, when you said I was cleaning loners, I just assumed mm-hmm. they were coming in from the outside. No, they come in. you were saying these have been <laughs> processed. Yeah. They went to the OR. Yeah. They're back in your decontam, yep. and now you're noticing that there's yep. a product in there that you don't actually carry. 
Yes. Oh, shut it down. Shut it down. Yeah. So what do you do? You just more you, okay. So you just go about your business. You like that's just another indicator. Indicators don't hurt nobody. Hey. Let's keep it moving. No, that's a major breaking process. You gotta say something. You gotta say something. You gotta say you, something. You sure? I'm me personally. All right. I'm well, going to say something. You gonna now, say something? We are mm -hmm. gonna keep it real because it's the process. Y'all know <laughs> some places where that that information might not be welcome, mm -hmm. especially after the case. But honestly, how do you know that there's a break in your process if you let stuff like that slide and don't say anything? Because clearly there were major breakdowns in more than one location, right? Because you received that trade. First of all, you received it in Dikatam the first time mm -hmm. and didn't clean it properly. And you're not going to tell me you did because you left behind products from the previous uh, hospital, previous case. And then it went to assembly, assembly person. I don't know what type of sleeping at the job they were doing. <laughs> they were in a hurry because you had 50 loaners hey, for hurry the next and day. Her. Come on. This is where we, uh, what they say, separate the boys from the men. Um, right. this, this is that part because, and I, I feel, I say this, I say, we say this all the time on the show. Like for me, if it's not something that I'm willing to go to the bedside and explain, then I, it's not good enough. I'm not going to go to the bedside and explain to them that I was being rushed and that's why I gave you the subpar product. No, I'm going to slow down enough to where I can actually do what I need to do. Because you can be, you know, you can be fast and you can be efficient. You know, have, having to speed up doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be a poor product. But again, if you're not going to slow down, even in these periods where you find out that something ain't quite right in your process, then what are you really doing? If you're not willing to evaluate how strong of a, a process that we have in place here. I agree with everything you says. But here's the kicker right here. So guys, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. If you're on YouTube, Sterile MD, and also get your little pinky finger out and then smash that little notification bell at the top so that you'll be notified every time we have a new show or any new content coming out because we're going to be filled with content in 2022. So oh, make sure, so get it, get it. We have a, a couple shows. Next week's show is going to be so hot. And then, <laughs> <laughs> hint, hint. And um, we have a show coming up in February that's going to be international. So definitely hey. tune in. So back to the show, right, guys? So in terms of, let me read the, let me read the poll to you guys. Working in Dick and Tam, we see many things, right? some ordinary and some not so ordinary, particularly involving loners, right? So ordinarily, what do you do in Dickentown, in the Dickentown area when you see an in the integrator not from your facility still in a used tree, which was apparently missed during the inspection process in prep and pack, right? What do you do? At the, the very least reported. You in Dickentown? Sometimes you see multiple, right? Sometimes it's not even one. Sometimes you see one in each corner. Please, nobody, no. li nobody live. No one lifts that bottom tray no. level to see if there's anything. They just bum, bum, bum. I've seen that at Lona. I'm about to say it can happen because with them loners, you have so many compartments, and sometimes mm -hmm. you got screw caddies, and it yep. can happen. And persons hide those integrators in the screw caddies, in the drill bits, and everything. And sometimes those crew caddies have multiple shelves. Yes. So then you think it's one layer, but then it's so thin, you lift that, and then there's another integrator in there. I'm like, why do we So, why do, I mean, why I have to that? ask you now, mm -hmm. is there such thing as too many indicators? Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> hold on, hold on. <laughs> right, guys, you want the integrators Damn. visible, <laughs> visible to whoever is presenting the product to the the person who's scrubbed, right? You want it visible. You don't want them like looking. I think there's another one there. Let me look at the bottom. Let me look in the corner here. Let me no, you want it visible. You definitely want to put it in the challenging areas, but you want it visible. Right. Right. Yeah, I've seen integrators nice. come back. I know were never looked at. So what if one didn't pass? Like what like what what do you do? So if you get an integrator coming back, it didn't pass. 
Oh, you really need to sound the alarm. You really need to say something, right? Oh, big time. Yeah, but big time. It, in the room, they're not looking for... They better be. They're not looking for nine integrators. Hey. They're thinking, I'm going to get one on each level if it's wrapped. Or if it's in a container, I'm going to get one on each corner on each level. We got to get some scrub tech friends in here. And so, so when you put one underneath the mallet and you put one under the screw caddy, in the middle of the screw caddy, on top of the screw caddy, are they looking for all that before they actually start using the tree? I mean, clearly not, especially if you're getting them back. <laughs> so, right. So that's right. tough. But again, should, should they be? I'm not sure. I would definitely love to see if we could get, you know, Scrub Tech or somebody with that AST background to answer that question. Because definitely, definitely. I've seen it, you know, I've seen techs where they check every single indicator that is on that tray. Like even the outside indicators they know to look for. Mm -hmm. But then also to your point, I've also seen folks where they see that one on top of that level and they're like, oh, it's good. And we're moving it's on. Good. Let's go. It passed. It's like go. we get pushed to move fast of the day. So, you know, if I'm if I'm the FPD tech that's putting six indicators in every single loaner tray and there's 12 trays in this room on top of the basics. No, ain't nobody looking for all that. They're, they're not mm -hmm. pulling out 100 indicators before they start this case. That's exactly. True. So here are the results for the poll. Right. So the options were. Put the integrator in the trash and keep it moving. Two, a lot of do. report it to the leadership team. Three, just laugh. <laughs> right? Because <laughs> you know who did it. Um, <laughs> so we had one person say, just laugh. You know, it's so funny. Just, just forget move about on, it. Move go. on, right? We had 10 persons say reported to the leadership team and we had 70 70 persons say put the integrator in the trash and keep it moving keep it moving they said we just, don't have time we have time for that Jeez. It's, it's just paper and ink just put it away but, i mean also yeah. to that point mm -hmm. even if you do put it in the trash and keep it moving that doesn't mean that you can't later report that that happened and the only reason why i encourage it is just again because it, that means that there's clearly a breakdown in your process now mm -hmm. whether or not it was a one-off that's hard to say right like because we're only talking about this hypothetical situation but mm -hmm. when it comes to patterns you won't see them if no one says anything true <laughs> so true. You, true. you know just true. raise just say hey true. this is what happened today yeah I didn't stop working decontam or whatever, but this is did, what happened. And did you see any integrators um, that from that's from um, Honey Valley Hospital? Come on. You know, <laughs> I'm just making that one up. There's a Honey Valley Come Hospital out there. there. I'm not talking about you. <laughs> so, out of 81, um, what do you call it? Responses. Responses. Okay, out of 81 responses, 70 said. Keep it pushing. Keep it moving. 10 said, report it. And one person said, it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> so, guys, if you want to see the results of the poll, go to the process on Facebook. That's our group. And and you will see all the polls. Open, right? so this is still yeah, the poll is still open. You can still vote. If you want to change... Change the results. Still vote on it. Give your opinion. I think some of them I opened the comments, um, the comment section. Some I closed the comments because I knew it would be a, a huge conversation, um, conversational topic. So I closed that just to Over get the votes. Responses. People are so active in our group. Definitely, that. definitely. I like that. I like that. I like that. So, guys, let's go into our next poll. Let me get here. So snacking in the department right how many of you guys have had a snack Woo! including including gum now gum in ain't the no department snack. gum is a snack it's a snack what's, what's a snack? okay <laughs> let me you want a google snack for me google snack what's a snack Oh, something that i actually chew and digest i don't know oh yeah you could swallow gum or you could get a sweet you know, I can't have gum, gum or a, a Hershey bar or something like that. So, okay, Kit now, Kat. how many people were snacking in the department, though? I got to so, know this. So, let me feel get... feel comfortable snacking in the SPD? Yeah, some people really feel like, you know, they walk in, 
You want hey, some of this? Now, as a manager, I have definitely walked into a few snack, uh, <laughs> so clearly snack areas that were not supposed to be. Uh, have you walked it into any snack trash cans? Uh, yes, definitely. I've I've seen a few candy wrappers in the trash cans behind the rail line. Uh, I think the most egregious that I saw was somebody actually brought like a carton of milk and left it at their <laughs> workstation. What? Um, and that's only second to the young lady that will forever be scarred in my memory for snacking on her banana in that decontam room. What? <laughs> Jeez. I was like, oh my. <laughs> Jeez. A banana? A banana in okay. decontam. Yeah, she was she was uh, inhaling those. Um, she was eating those um aerosols. Get that, that break yeah. in, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm hmm. She and I mean, especially that. now that after that Corey Ofsted uh, paper came out about the splashing and decontaminating, mm -hmm. I just would say I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> so here are the results. All right. So have you ever snacked in? I, I think some people will feed me on this one. Some people said they never had. You never walked in with any gum, a sweet, a snick, like not not no Snickers, but like I uh, count gum. Uh, gum is yes, gum because it's also a risk with gum also. Right, because people be trying to take it out. And... You got the wrapper, and you got to dispose of it. <laughs> so if that wrapper ends up in a tree, that's problems. Now, if that gum ends up in a tree, that's more problems. You know, so man, you gotta, I, yeah. I had a traveler friend uh, one time working. I think she was working as a supervisor or manager, and she said that they actually opened some trays in the OR, and there were like um, pretzels, like the the mini bag of pretzels inside of the tray the person i guess what I hold up hold up hold up hold up hold up know hold what up. happened there hold up a gallon of water and blueberries in the department jordan what <laughs> what whoa 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 now we know we want healthy techs stay hydrated <laughs> and stay healthy but like there's a there's a cutoff point. <laughs> there's, a, there's a line. I would have loved to have been a fly on the wall for the day Jordan walked in and he saw that gallon of water and the blueberries. Jordan, like, what do you say? Can I have a sip? <laughs> get that out of I here. Don't laugh. I don't want to laugh. A whole gallon? Wow. Said, so Jordan said he have gum behind his mask. I don't count gum. I don't know. I'm not counting gum. So where are you? Okay, where are you? Where are you ingesting the gum? Inside or outside? I guess I hope that you put it in your mouth before you came in the department. Oh, okay, okay. So what if you have your workstation and you're like, okay, I have a pack no, of... No, don't do it. Juicy fruit. <laughs> I have a pack of juicy fruit in my pocket right don't here. Let do me... It. <laughs> you know? Ah. Then the inner liner falls in the tree, but you have the outer one, you roll it up and you put it in the thing. And then you don't sanitize your hands and you go right back into that tree. Now that's where we fight. See, <laughs> <laughs> that's where we're fighting. I had an, ins an incident like that early on in my career where uh, a young lady would lick her thumb, and because this was back in the day before the file or before the uh, tracking systems and everything was in our filing okay. cabinets, right? So okay. you go to the file cabinet, pull it out, you look for the kit. Mm -hmm. and she would lick and and grab right and so mm -hmm. i'm a young supervisor i've i've had haven't had to deal with any type of disciplinary action up until this point mm -hmm. and this was the first like issue on my shift because i came up on my evening shift so everybody that was there with me was people that i had already worked with um were super great techs fantastic techs it was a mm -hmm. great environment but it was the first time somebody was coming to me as a, as a leader and like hey this is really making me uncomfortable because this person keeps picking on me. They keep picking on me. And I'm like, oh, no, like, wait, let me find out what's going on. Because the other person, th that's not their MO. They don't they don't harass. So let me find mm -hmm. out what's going on. I bring them all in. And that was the issue. She was like, no, I just keep telling her to wash her hands because she keeps licking her thumb and then going into the file cabinet. Now, as I was probably like 25 or something at the time. And my manager was co coaching me on how to coach them as a supervisor and essentially was <laughs> explaining to me, like, listen, you guys are younger. You've had like microbiology and anatomy and physiology and you understand all, you know, the way the germs work. And this this lady, she felt like her explanation to me was that saliva was clear. 
and oh, therefore wow. <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't uh dirty so yeah that was interesting like bridging the gap on the education but wow i don't know i mean i hear you as far as i definitely would not recommend text opening up anything to eat you know anything to go in their mouth inside of the department but gum i think is where i would draw the line i don't have a problem with people chewing on gum while they're working or and especially now that we're all wearing masks chewing on gum behind your mask um mm. do you have a problem with them having gum on their person in the department I, i'm not patting you down before you come in the department hey 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 turn around what's I'm in the jacket doing. what's in the jacket <laughs> I'm not doing it. Those so. jacket pockets look a little heavy. What's in there? <laughs> I, I think that's over. You have lotion. You don't want it to gum. Be, right, right. <laughs> you don't want it to be an environment where people are uncomfortable. But I, I, I don't think anybody would encourage you to open up your gum on that side of the red line. You know, mm, just need or disposing of it. Like you need to leave the the clean area. Get rid of your gum. Wash your hands, and move move around. All right. So here are the results for this poll. <sighs> so I don't believe it. 17 persons said they've never had anything in the department. 17. And 27 woo, said we eat every now. No, they said they had had something, you know, had munched on something within the department. Uh, yeah. So, you know. The yeses gonna, have it. Right. The yeses have it. We're the gonna yeses have we're it. gonna assume they took an abundance of caution and that yeah. was not near a tray. Yes. Yeah, that was like right <laughs> at the door. You had you, you know, you treat your gum, you put it in the trash next to the hey. door, you got your sanitizer, you rub your hands, and then you went to work. That's you know about what it. I think is another good one is mm -hmm. uh how many how many people have ever walked in behind the red line in their street clothes? Have you ever seen anybody do this before? Never. I don't know. That, does that even happen? Oh, I don't know. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. I, I went to the toilet with a surgeon one time. I didn't know it was a surgeon, but uh, it wouldn't have mattered. I still would have told her she was out of pocket. But she crossed that red line in her street clothes with a briefcase and everything. I just assumed that she didn't know where she was at because, in my mind, no one in surgical services would just walk behind the red line without having on the proper attire, let alone argue with somebody about it. But, but especially like off hours and weekends and stuff, I've seen that where people go ahead and run across that department with their street clothes on. Or yeah, why? That. Don't do that. That's wrong. Don't, Don't do, do it. it. Don't do it, it. It was um, it was a story early on in my career as as my first time as a manager that um. I, I think about it because not that I'm running across the department with the um, with my street clothes, but you would have employees sometimes, especially once those uh, attire policies came out heavy, where it was, you can't even go outside right without changing clothes. Um, and we had an incident where a couple of uh, really young people lost their lives to some infections and mm. come to find out it was some stuff that had been tracked in from outside. Like they were able to do cultures and realize that it was um, some, some type of bacteria that was in the actual ground on the dirt. And so they surmised that probably got tracked in on somebody's shoe. Right. And they didn't have shoe covers on, or they didn't have on that dedicated pair of shoes that only stays inside the facility. Um, and they ultimately lost two patients to infection. So that story stuck with me wow. for the entirety of my management career. And I always try to drive that home because I know that even if that's happening, it's nobody's intention to hurt somebody, right? They're not, they're not trying to um, compromise their patients. Maybe you're a smoker and you, and you go outside on your, on your breaks or, you know, maybe you just you need some fresh air and you go outside. Like I, I find it hard to believe that that person had any type of malice. Right. But still we affect people in that way. We are that close to folks. Um, so it's, it's challenging because working behind the red line, you can get really used to it to the point where it doesn't have that same weight that it should always carry, but just don't forget what we're doing. Um, and don't forget that even if you're the most, you know, buttoned up technician, somebody else's stuff can affect what you're doing, you know? So you gotta be, you gotta be above board all the time. 
all the time. And don't take chances with uh, with what you're doing, guys. Life. Don't take chances, yeah, with somebody else's life, with your yeah. life, with your coworkers' lives. Okay. So definitely pay attention, guys. So, without further ado, we'll move on to our next poll. So, this one is a little technical, right? Yeah. Gas plasma indicators. Where do they go? Look, do they go in the, the corner? <laughs> And <laughs> okay. on the prep and pack side, where do your gas plasma indicator indi indicators go? On the sides, in the middle, it doesn't matter. Once they're in there, you're good. Trick question. It, Wherever it, the IFU it, it says. Kinda is, it kind of is. No, no, no. We're not gonna. Go, we're not gonna do the IFU thing. We're not gonna do the IFU thing. That's a big <laughs> cop out. No, that that's was a big cop. Twenty two. No, no, no. We want specifics. We don't want, well, follow your no. No, we're not doing that. There's too much information at your fingertips to give the correct information. I'm going to disagree with you, especially when it comes to an indicator, because that's one of the, the um, in my mind, that's one of the most readily available IFUs in the department because it's one in every box, you mm -hmm. know, versus a lot of the products and stuff that we use. It might not be there. Like it might be in the big box that everything gets shipped in, but it's not in the individual boxes. But when it comes to them integrators, you ain't got no excuse. You better read that if you. Yeah, I'm saying the information is readily available, so there's no need to give the explanation. Follow the IFU. What is uh, the IFU? No, because each product is different. Mm, don't you have to follow? The container manufacturers, IFU. Each product is different. I mean, there's a there's a million different vendors for trays. There's a million different vendors for indicators. So the first thing I would recommend you do is check the IFU. I got this was one where I definitely got schooled one time when it came mm -hmm. to um, indicators because my habit was to put one in the opposite corners of the level that I was dealing with. So it was going to be two. On each level, one in opposite corners of the tray. And I have been doing that, probably got trained like that, and had just kept doing it, right? Um, I think it was one of my travelers one time that I was working with that was like, uh, are you sure? <laughs> of course, I'm saying it's the indicators. Yeah, duh. It's one here, there. We're good. Mm -hmm. Pulled out that 3M IFU, found out nobody. Not only was I putting too many. But I was put it in the wrong location because per that IFU, there should be one in the center of the tray. So I what? got checked. I Which, got checked. Like what? Huh? Sorry, buddy. What Check What were you IFU. doing? You were rapping or were you? Mm, now that I don't remember. I don't remember if it was a, a, I think it was a container is what we were dealing with. But um, but I don't remember exactly if it was a wrap tray or if it was a container tray. I just remember that they whipped out that IFU on me. And upon review, so I had to my practice. So, for containers, the most challenging place. So basically, it doesn't. You're putting it in the most challenging place. So most ninety nine point nine. Uh, I haven't seen any round. I haven't seen any. I haven't seen any round containers. So I, you know what? On my mission to Jamaica, they did have round containers, hmm. but I digress. Um, The most challenging place is usually, more often than not, I haven't heard anything contrary, the corners. That's where for steam sterilization, for steam sterilization, for steam, for steam hey, sterilization. You're going to an SPD department tomorrow. You pull out that IFU and you let us know what it says. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm telling you. I have the IFU in my brain. It's right here. It just, you know, it's in there. It's in there. So... Your corners challenge on wrap trays the middle. You challenge the middle. It's like baking a cake, right? Like the middle is the most difficult to get hot or to cook, I'm right? So you want to challenge that. I'm just telling you what happened to me. Well, <laughs> they, they just wanted to be right, so they told and you they like, were. "Oh, you're right. They're right. They're right. I'm gonna they stop. Were. I'm gonna stop what wrong. I'm doing before I get fired." So wrong. and I don't um I don't know if it was just our product, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like I don't know if it was just that particular brand or or what, but yeah. Mm -hmm. it said center one in the center of the level. You were rapping, okay. I'm gonna tell you what you were doing at that time 
in that point in time in your career. You were wrapping the tree Could have been. and you were putting them in the corners. And that person said, don't put them in the corners. You getting is getting wrapped. <laughs> so, <coughs> so, all right. So the results for this poll are for the the the, the categories were center, corners, center, and corners. So we had nine five persons say put the gas plasma in indicator in the center and the corners. We had nine persons say just put it in the corners, which I don't get. I don't judge. And you had 36. Even you said it. <laughs> I'm telling you, that was my habit. You had 36 say put it in the middle. Now, now if you know gas plasma sterilization, it's, it's a contact form of sterilization. It falls in the tree. It just goes and lays down. Right? It doesn't matter where you put the integrator. It will change. Oh, I ain't with that. Yes. I ain't with yes. that. Because, because, because. I got to pull out some IFUs now. That's pull out some great. IFUs. That's, what, that's all we're going to have to do. Pull out that. some IFUs. And then, and then, and then our viewers got to give us a little. Um... Oh, what? What? No way. No way. No, no, way. no, no. And you in the North East? No, no come way. on. What y'all Come on, Jed. Like, what y'all do? Yeah, the center. So he said, I would have to agree per most books, too. Yeah, I would put it in the center, but you know, most things don't stay in the center. It, it'll, it'll, well, you'll, you'll have now, a little ship. You'll have I'm a little ship. Now, you take it so it now. really, now, but per for instruction, instructional purposes, you'd say put it in the center. But in a practical setting, even if it deviates from the center, between the center and the end, it will still be fine. So it doesn't have to be in the center. It could be in that tree. Because it's contact follow whatever. Up. Follow up, follow up. We follow one up. Follow up, follow up, follow up, follow up. I won't get into it so, too much. We follow, follow one up. up on that one. Follow up. But before you follow Head over to the YouTube and hit that subscribe button. <laughs> hit that subscribe button. Head over to our YouTube channel. Hit that subscribe button. We really appreciate it. And let us know. Um, with some comments below. Let us know how you feel about the topic, the show. And also hit that notification bell with your pinky Woo! finger. Yeah, because, you know. I mean, you could use your thumb, too, because these phones are so big nowadays. Use your thumb. Hit that oh, notification man. bell. And you'll get notified every time we have a new show. Or any new content coming out, you'll hear your phone. Your phone will let you know. Ding! You're like, "What's this? Oh, it's the process." Let's tune in. Yes. All right. Let me let me see what Jordan's talking about there. He said, "Right, only steam this way or HLD, even low temperature, but we don't gas plasma up this way." Hey, they ain't doing that around there. All right. They ain't doing it. Okay. So, All right. Now let's look. move on to the next one. Before you go into the next poll, I gotta ask: how is a uh, how's COVID affecting everybody right now? Like I'm seeing, I saw a post in one of the travel groups that a bunch of cases got canceled at a facility because the surgeons went to a holiday party and everybody had COVID. So I'm curious, and I've also seen some in like in Beckers that some states are starting to um, ask that people roll back non-emergent cases. I know here in Illinois they're doing that. They're the uh, governor has asked that they stop doing non-emergent cases just to kind of give a little bit of um, breathing room for the rest of the hospital. So I'm curious, have you have you heard anything? Are cases going off without a hitch or is Omicron taking us back to the beginning? Okay, so yeah, um, um, I think we learned a few things from COVID-19. Now we have Omicron. I won't call it the same thing. Um, we learned a couple of things and people are less fearless. You know how you, mm. you know, you do something bad and your mother hits you and you're like, no, 
that tap isn't really a hard tap. Like she hit me, but she didn't that, really hit me, hit that me. Like, tap I, I, right, that was a little tap. Like I could do that again and I would get away with it. So he's like, oh, I thought you was gonna give me, like, you know, you know, you cool up, you think she's mm. gonna hit you really hard and she gives you a little, pop. you're like, ah. Oh. Been there, done that. That was, that was a little, that was a little something. Like I, I, could, I could deal with that. So you go back and you're like, okay, if I do that again, I know it's gonna be a little tap and I'll get away with it. That's kind of how Ooh. it is now. You're so, saying people are like going out and, and getting yeah. into crowds and stuff, even though they know right. they probably they, shouldn't. Yeah, they know they get they're gonna get a little tap, you know, on the wrist or some, you know, a little fever, a little sick, but they know they're not but gonna why? die. Do you think that's because so. the Omicron variant is supposedly so much less uh intense? They think that that's why people are like, okay, we're just gonna Yeah, go. yeah. People are like, whatever, I got my two shots or my three shots, I'm double boosted, triple boosted, you know. Boost. You know how many boosts you want? Turbo boost, turbo <laughs> boosted. So, <laughs> oh, no. so, um, so people are taking it a little more lightly, mm. you know. And I've heard more cases, more and more cases. The cases are ramping up, but the ORs are not. Some of them are not totally shutting down. You may get a forty percent shutdown in some places. You may get up to eighty, ninety, but it's not like. 2020 where you had the full Stop. closure like Erks! you know let's let's figure out what department you could you do one-on-ones if you could do you know the answer the phone if yeah. you want to go to the surgery center if you want to go clean do inventory really is changing i yeah. saw um i saw st v's um i know we covered that or i think it was like mid of 2021 that st v's um strike and i just saw that they just finished after 360 days, something like that, of uh, of striking the longest strike in Massachusetts history, and now they are uh, trying to bring those nurses back, but also trying to figure out how to bring back some of the staff members that were let go due to COVID. So it's a, it's a really an interesting uh, environment that we're in right now. On top of travel pay, I just saw pay go up over three grand a week. For contracts, it's insane. If somebody was asking, is that sustainable? Do you feel like that's sustainable for them to continue to pay us at that rate? Yeah. It's you only see? money. It's only money. Like, come on. Come on. It's only money. Like, are we talking about travelers, too? Travelers, too. Yeah. Like, it's only money. Like, 10 years from now, we're going to look at $100 an hour. Like. You know, it's mm -hmm. only money. Ten years ago, we were looking at what twenty some dollars. People were going, "Oh my God, I'm making twenty two dollars." True. Now, you know what I mean? Like, it's gonna be up to seventy five. We're gonna be competing with nurses because even if our certification doesn't bar nurses from doing what we do, we're still gonna we we are a specialty. We're still gonna be getting up there. In some places, not everywhere in the country, yeah. some places we're gonna be close to what nurses make. Because we have a niche profession, Every, and you can't just walk. Unlike some, what some some people may think, you can't just walk off the street and do it at a high level. True, you could do it, but not at a high level, and right. be able to think through problems. And that's what people don't understand. Thinking, just doing one thing, it's easy, but thinking through situations, that's the hard part. You know? Right, right. Like this was so I um on on the LinkedIn space, um one of our uh one of our friends Jesse uh had a post about subject matter experts in the field, and I feel like that is you know the difference is when you have people that understand what we do well enough to be able to think through an issue, think through a problem. Mm -hmm. Like that's what's gonna set you apart from just an average SPD tech. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, Jordan, what you talking about? Jordan said, I think more than COVID, we need emergency plans for low to no staffing because we don't have staff due to COVID, but the hospitals are functioning as if it is normal. Mm -hmm. Absolutely could yeah. not agree. With and then you. look at his next message. Oh, my goodness. We had 130 today. Our make is 160, I think. Wow. Wow. 130 mm -hmm. cases. So, yeah, ain't nothing slowing down. Nothing's slowing down for us, staffing or no staffing, right? So at what point does the staffing situation become uh, a crisis or an emergency? Man. Mm -mm -mm. 
That's crazy. I, but I would agree. Like, at that point, you do. And we're so far into it, too. You know, as far as um, like the great resignation and uh, and then the discharges for, for folks that um, elected or maybe could not take the uh, COVID vaccine. So we've already saw those employees leave the space. So you, do, you would hope that there is a more proactive plan for what happens next, especially um, especially in our space, because like you said, it's niche. It's not something that you could just go grab somebody off the street and and they can now do this. Um, you you can actually grab somebody off the street, but yeah. if a problem arises, then they'll be like, "What do I do now?" I saw the the water was a little cold, but I didn't, you know, I just kept washing. Oh, I didn't have detergent, so I had hot water, so I just put it. You know, like yeah. that person won't be able to have those critical thinking skills that would help them complete the task okay. efficiently so new, or effectively tests. so that's that's the problem with that if you if you just simply want a body plenty of those out there pick one up bring them in but if you want your um if you're concerned about patient safety you will have a certified cell person professional within your department um next poll right. have you ever seen a biological change okay let me do a little background okay you pull your biological out your load pull your load out etc etc you incubate you do you know, do the 10 minutes i know some people are gonna ding me on that do the 10 minute cool time you pull it out you know you crack it you use your crusher i use fingers with gloves and i push it down pull it out shake it and put it back in all right. All right. That's what I do. I rather that than the crusher because the the crusher gets all gunky at the top. You have to be cleaning it and all that. Like they need to invent something better than that. I don't like the crusher. I, There's the challenge. Someone, somebody invent something better than that. Yeah, I I don't like the crusher. Anybody could come up with something if you get a crusher. Like you know those um paper those paper um those staplers those automatic staplers. Where you just put the thing in and automatically crushes it. <laughs> now, if we could get a crusher like that, that would be that would definitely be good because that thing, you know, capital tunnel is on its way, people. It's on its <laughs> way. Um, <laughs> so, um, so, and um, so you incubate your bio, right? You incubate your bio. Incubate it. I don't know how many minutes. Give, give, give me some time. Ten minutes, fifteen, twenty, twenty-four, twenty-five minutes. Boom. That line comes up, it's negative. You're like, you know what? Let me go pull these loads out. I'll be right back. You know? Or let me let me put put those sterile trees on the transport card. I'll put them on the transport card. I'll be right back. I'll read that bio and we're good. Then you come back, the bio is positive. Have you ever seen that? I've never seen that. Um now I've I've definitely had folks pull bios out and they went positive and nobody could really figure out why, because mm-hmm. um, like your cycle parameters pass and all that fun stuff. Um, but I've never had I've never seen a result change on me. You never seen okay? I have seen that little e message. Yeah, got me. You know messages. that little e. Eh, 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 you pushed it in wrong. You pushed right. it in sideways. You didn't crush it all the way. Right. You know it, it was hanging on the side. You wasn't paying attention. You just put it in and you're walking away to do something yeah. else. Absolutely. I have seen that. Then you pull it out. You're like, oh, you didn't crush it, or you didn't blah blah blah, or you didn't fling it or flick it, whatever the right. case may be. Except that that media. that media didn't get to the um, get all the way, all the way down to the the spores. Mm. That little that little area right down there. I had one. Where is it now? Man. I don't know. I, I, the, I think the the bigger question though is, what do you do? Like, so, let's say it really did change on you for whatever reason. Maybe the machine malfunctioned or something, and it changed on you. What do you do next? You report that to your. If you have a, you should have a process in place, written down, accessible to everyone, that when there's an issue. With a positive bio, number one, quarantine the load. You know, and make sure that load is not going anywhere. Go anywhere. 
because now it's not an hour anymore. It's not three hours anymore. It's, right. It, it's, uh, you know. It's however long it takes me to reprocess right. this cycle. It's, right. It's like 30 minutes, like, yeah. So, but before that loads cool, you should have your results. Because I'm not seeing any, unless it's maybe, may, okay, if it's a low temp load, that, that's probably possible. It could be up before. But if it's a steam steam load that that's going to be at least at yeah, least not. 45 minutes like we talked about this on uh i uh, did a beyond clean on low temp not mm -hmm. so long ago and i mentioned that that one of the things that i'm excited that's changing is that you now release your low temp cycles after you do a reading on your bio now because it used to be that the bio took 24 hours to be read so you were sending everything out you know, and sometimes multiple times a day before you got that result back the next 24 hours. Right. Uh, but now there you can put one into in, in each individual load and you can get, you know, a, a 30 minute readout now. Um, so more and more stare at or not just stare at, but, all you know, all the different brands and low temp are starting to get that same treatment. So I was excited to hear that because a couple of the folks on there were leaders and they were like, no, we don't release anything before that bio is read. And this is the reason why you don't want to find out after the fact that there's an issue with your documentation and you're not able to actually certify that you met all the parameters and everything is good to go. If you're pushing your loads out way before your bios are read. But that also speaks to your process, because if you're the type of tech that is not incubating those in a timely fashion either. It's going to take longer, you know, for the results to come out. And I, that is one of my pet peeves. Like when I go up to a sterilization desk and I see multiple BIs that are just waiting to be input, it's like, yeah, what are what you are doing? You doing? <laughs> You're prolonging the process. What are you doing? <laughs> true, true. So let me get into the poll results, right? See. So we had seven folks, seven professionals actually have seen. And I hope they understood the question from negative to positive, not from mm. positive to negative, because I've seen positive to negative based on how you incubate, how you angle. touch and handle your bio, et cetera, et cetera, yeah, et cetera. No. So I make sure you use your gloves. You never seen positive to negative? No, I'm saying I would have to redo it. I, I just, it wouldn't, I couldn't. I I've seen positives based on how it's based on, it could be a well mal mal malfunction right. in the incubator. So you definitely have to incubate. That's what I mean. Like at that point, there's no way for you to know exactly what was this machine, was it the cycle, was this the exposure, is this my incubator, is this care handling? Like there's so many different things that it could be. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna guess. I'm just gonna read. Process. You're gonna read. You're gonna give somebody those 15 trays to redo. Yeah, I am. Oh my goodness! You see, Sorry. That's that's why I Sorry. won't fill out any applications to your area. Um, <laughs> Sorry, so. but yes. So yeah, we're gonna reprocess this and we're we're going no. to do so until we can give uh you know we can give the right the, the right parameters have been met. The BI is negative, mm -mm. there's no questions here because mm -mm. with SPD, that's all we're doing is we're verifying you know, that these particular parameters have been met. And that's our best guess that everything in here is mm -hmm. sterile. If I can't give you that, then what product am I actually pushing out at this point? I, well, I don't see why people get so hyped up about reprocessing loads. It's literally what we do all day. Mm. You're going to reprocess it today, tomorrow, <laughs> 15 minutes, 20, whatever. Just that's Yeah, your but 20 loaners just came in. And you want us to do that load over again? Hey. Come like on. We said at the beginning of the episode, we're not compromising patients because of the process here. No, but you got to look at the facts. Look at the facts. Look the at facts your printout. Look at your integrators. Look that, at that all your facts. facts. And then it could be a well. So all you do, you switch your bio to another well. And retest it. Retest it. All right. So now I tested it once. I got positive. I tested it again. I got negative. Which result am I walking with? The one that works for me so that I don't have to reprocess my load? No. You you follow all your other parameters. Ah, yes. And you say everything else meets. Boom. What could I, then you actually test that well again and see if it's working correctly. Let's see. 
So, okay, so the poll results. <laughs> seven, <laughs> seven. What the people say. Seven professionals said they've seen a negative to a positive. A bio actually changed from negative to positive. And 34 said they've never seen that. You know, I've never seen something turn from That's negative to positive. Never, never, never. It don't happen. It don't happen in my neck of the woods. So I would say re-incubate. I know so I have heard some person say never reincubate what it says, that's final, that's it. So, but I would say troubleshoot because I have I seen follow up on two things now. So mm -hmm. I gotta follow up on the low temp integrator mm -hmm. placement. Mm -hmm. And then I'm curious to see because <laughs> I know that Amy actually does have some language about how to uh, what like what your recourses are when your uh, test results are not accurate or excuse me, are not um are not negative. So I'm curious to see what is that process. And hopefully, <clears throat> as a facility, there is a policy in place, like you said, a protocol what to do so that yeah. it's not each individual person coming up to that situation and going, okay, what I think I should do. Mm -hmm. Now, this is what the NAR thinks I should do. Yes, yes. <laughs> Follow it carefully, precisely. Carefully. So let's go into this question. I didn't know the answer to, but I asked anyway. Is there an age requirement? And Isham folks, please comment down below. Is there an age requirement to take the CRCST exam? Do you have to be 18 or older? Can you do it in high school? Can you do it before you turn 18? I haven't seen anything in there in the application saying 18 or did I misread? Oh, now that I don't know. And would so, definitely have to research. I would hope, though, that it. I would hope that um, there was some age requirement. But I, I think I think it's it's an interesting concept, especially when you said about high school, because I know that there are um, there are some programs that are based in school. So, like, um, not necessarily mm -hmm. SPD programs, but like trade programs where students can go and. And they can uh, practice part of their trade during their school time, and then um, and continue their you know their credits and everything. And so they graduate on time, but they also graduate with this trade. Honestly, I don't know if anybody's doing that in SPD, but I think it's an amazing opportunity to capture folks um, before they exit high school and come into the workforce because we need them first and foremost. <laughs> and, definitely, definitely. Um, and I think it's it's an, an awesome opportunity to layer some education too, because they're actually in school, you know, learning on a yes, daily basis. Yes. So their 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 brain is um fresh, <laughs> fresh and moving and it's it's receptive. It's it can be molded, you know, in, in the right direction. And I, so, I think it's a it's a cool opportunity, you know, for a young person to be able to make a little more money than the average, you know, uh entry level job. And get them familiar with healthcare, get them in the door. Cause if they if they're there and they're seeing the processes, more than likely they probably won't ever leave, right? They're not gonna um they're gonna stay within that healthcare space. I mean, not necessarily not never leave SPD, but they're gonna stay within that healthcare space because just because of the opportunities. You got tuition reimbursement, you got um, all these different positions, all these different departments, there's tech, there's you know, there's everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it opens up to you. Yeah, it opens you up to so many different things, so many different people you could communicate, network with. Ask okay. search techs, hey, how's your job? I remember when I started, I asked a couple of search techs, how do you like your job? They said it sucked. That's why I didn't do it. So, <laughs> yeah. People have to remember that, too, like inside the spaces that um, you are advocates for what you do. You know, people see you, people pay attention to you, and... Mm -hmm. And they draw, they do create their own opinions based off of how you carry yourself. So, you know, if you're the type of person that everything sucks and this is mm -hmm. the hardest thing you ever right. done, whatever. And right. You, you don't want to do this. You're giving that out there and then you're wondering why it's hard for you to keep people in your department. I bet you might want to, you might want to look at your attitude. <laughs> mm, definitely, definitely. So, guys. We have come to the end of this show. We have a lot planned for 2022, guys. We have a show coming up. Black History Month is coming up in February. Yes. February 2nd, we have an amazing show. 
and plus next week guys you don't want to miss next week if you ever watch this show if you never watched it if you know someone who likes podcasts vlogs etc tell them tune in next week Check you can't day. miss this show hint is gonna be a special 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 guess special guess special guest, special guest. SS special. <laughs> so, guys, make sure you tune in next week, guys. Thank you for tuning in. Alessandra, what's going on with you? What do you want to say to our our first? Just thank you guys viewers. Um, because I have one more month before it's my first official year with the Process Podcast. So I'm super excited. Woo! Faithful day. <laughs> so I'm happy about that. Um, I do just want to thank everybody for tuning in and making 2021 so phenomenal for us. It, I truly couldn't thank thank you guys enough. It was insane. Yeah, guys, check out our store on on uh, Etsy, Sterile MD. Um, please don't buy the knockoffs. Buy the original gear. You know, guys, some people are trying. Have, to right, take- we got. <laughs> We got pirates out here stealing We got our pirates stuff. out here stealing our <laughs> stuff, guys. We have the original Sterile MD gear, guys. There are other people taking our stuff. Um, and they're going to find out about it soon, though. But, guys, check us out. Sterile MD, Etsy.com. And, guys, we'll see you next week. Peace.